This is Lewis Art for Boxing Social in association with Empire Fight Store. Delighted to be joined by Frank Smith here at a Queensbury show, mate. I'm obviously sporting Shabazz Masood, but yeah, enemy territory for you today, mate. Are you all right? Yeah, yeah, no, look, it's not as enemy as it used to be. We're all uh, friendly, friendly now. But it's a big main event, you know, looking forward to tonight. Tough, tough fight for Shabazz, but it's a 50 50, um, and we believe he can do it. So excited for what's to come. How often, like, I guess, how often do you go to like the rival shows? I know you was at, Joy I know you was at Chisora, um, Chisora Joyce, but I said, I think you said before like you were like you went to a creamy show before when it when it was animosity like incognito is that true no, i wore a hat i wore a hat i wasn't incognito but uh, i went to chisora because he's one of my out of a sport you know he's actually a, uh, someone who's become a close friend over the years so i wanted, wanted to go and support him for that fight against joyce earlier in the year now i don't i don't tend to go to too many shows because we've got 35 odd shows a year so when i'm not at one of our shows, I like to uh, spend some time at home, like anything, I'm sure. Yeah. But yeah, big night for Shabazz tonight. Um, oh, this will probably go out after the after the main event, but um, yeah, just sort of. Film two parts. Yeah, <laughs> but but yeah, big night for him to prove himself. Uh, yeah, massive night to prove himself. You know, I think look, he's had a stop-start career. You know, he, when we signed him. He, uh, he had to pull out very last minute at Liverpool show. We got him straight back out, you know, three, four weeks later, headlining the next gen. You know, he was supposed to fight Liam back in July, I think it was. Uh, Liam pulled out, obviously injured. So, but we managed to keep Shabazz on the show. You know, so he's had a bit of activity. He's had multiple fights, but yes, this is the fight where he needs to prove himself. Everyone knows what Liam Davis can do. Everyone knows what he's about. But this is Shabazz ch Shabazz's chance, and we tru truly believe he can go in there and do the job. Definitely. Just did just want to uh, pay attention. Just want to switch focus back to last week. Obviously, Jack Catterall beating Regis Pro Gray. Um, I haven't had a chance to speak to you since then, but for yourself, first uh, first big show, big boxing out at the Carp Arena. I personally, I really enjoyed it. Um, yeah, a successful round, would you say, especially at a new arena? Yeah, look, great venue, and I, I'm sure a lot of promoters are going to be taking events there because it really works well. It's a nice place for people to come as well. You know, you want to you want a place, a venue where fans come to, and I think by sort of 6 p.m. we had 60 or 70 percent of the audience already in there, which for boxing is quite surprising. Surprising. Um, a great atmosphere for the main event, you know, a, a fight that took four rounds really to heat up, but after that, it was a brilliant fight. You know, um, Regis Progre putting Jack Cashrell down, Jack coming back, and then multiple knockdowns for Jack. A, a great performance from Jack Cashrell and a great win, um, and sets him up now. We've got to deliver the world title fights. He deserves a world title. He should have been undisputed many years back. He didn't, he didn't get that, um, but now he deserves a world championship, and that's what we aim to do. I guess, yeah, what, what is the next thing? Because obviously there's a lot of world title opportunities. I know there was a potential of the WBO, WBO becoming vacant with Tiafimo Lopez, but obviously there's always going to be, like, for yourself, do you, when you look at, you obviously got an in-house fight with, with Liam Parr and Richardson Hitchens, that would ideally be the next option to try and keep, I guess, it all in-house when you've got two two of your matching fighters fighting a guy and the winner could obviously be a matching fighter being Carroll. Yeah, look, that's a great fight on December 7th, Liam Power and Richards and Hitchens. That's a fight we'd love to make, another, as you say, a world championship fight in-house, the winner taking on Jack Cashel. They'll also be looking at what they can do, you know, they'll be looking at what unifications are out there. The WBO at the minute, Tiafimo seems a bit out there with things, you know, he doesn't I think he's having disputes with top rank. It's talk about whether he goes to 147 as well. So let's see what happens with that belt. You've got Barboza and uh, Ramirez fighting in two weeks on the Latino night show, a Riyadh season show, um, which will form you know, a little bit of what's going to happen with that WBO belt as well. So, you know, there's lots of opportunities, lots happening in the 140 division. It's an exciting division right now, but like I say, we've got to focus now on delivering a world title shot for Jack. I know we speak about, I spoke about it before, but just asking like, on camera, like how come, I know Liam Parr, Australian, Richard Hitchens, a New Yorker, how come that fight, the main event was it landed in Puerto Rico? Well, you know, look, we were originally, one of the fights we were looking to do was Richards and Hitchens against Pedraza. If you look through the undercard as well, we got multiple Puerto Rican fighters that we promote on the card. Um, so when it came to it, we decided to keep it there. We'd done a deal already with the government for December 7th. And when we were looking at what we were going to do with the fighters, you know, the mandatory was there between Liam Power and Richards and Hitchens. It made sense to do that fight and that's why it fell there. Quickly moving on, Anthony Joshua, um, looking like the bar rematch isn't the next option for himself? Yeah, I don't think it's about the bar as a as an individual. It's about the time frames, and you know February is looking difficult. You know for him to be able to get back into camp and be ready. This is the biggest fight of his career now. He's got to make the right decisions, and he can't rush back in. He can't rush back in with injuries, with niggles, where he won't be prepared. He won't be 100%. So you know we'll see what how things play out. But I think he'll be looking to fight closer to sort of May, June, summertime.
Would that option still be Dubois, do you think? Look, Dubois is going to, and I'm sure Dubois is going to want to stay active. You know, he'll be looking at what's there for him. Um, so, you know, they're going to plan what's there for him. And then a lot can change in the heavyweight division in just days and weeks. You know, so a few months from now, anything's possible. You know, Tyson Fury and Alexander Usyk is taking place in December. You know, the Tyson Fury fight is a naturally massive fight for Anthony Joshua that, you know, will be, I still believe, is the biggest fight, one, or if not one of the biggest fights in the sport. So would you say it's more a sensible option to wait for like that undisputed fight to play out in case sort of a, the Fury fight or the Fury option does arise, as you say there? Is that a smart thing to do instead of making a decision going into a Dubai rematch? I think it's more about him being ready, fit and ready. If he was fit and ready, he'd be fighting in February, but he's not going to be ready for then, you know, so that sort of informs the decision without anything else. But, you know, I think, like I said, I, I believe win, lose, draw, all these results. Tyson Fury against Anthony Joshua is a massive fight. It's one of the biggest fights in the sport, regardless of results. So, you know, that, that's a massive fight if the Dubai fight isn't there as well. Uh, the last one from myself, actually wanted to ask you about the, the Japan Prize Fight Tournament. I know a few, um, a few sort of rumours arise on Twitter that Matron was suing Rakuten over it. Uh, any truth to that? Yeah, well, look, we got a legal matter on going with them right now. It's unfortunate. Um, can't speak too much about it, obviously. The quarterfinals took place back in July. The semi-finals were signed, ready to take place in October. We've got an ongoing matter, and you know, as soon as we can speak more about it, we will, but right now we can't. Perfect. Thank you, Frank. Appreciate it, mate. Top man. Thank you, mate. Cheers, mate. Thank you. Top man.